In this lesson, you'll become familiar with the elements of the edit screen. You'll learn how to modify the display and access tools that will be helpful when you begin to edit your transcripts. This is the File tab. It displays the name of the currently open function or file within a function. File tabs are used to navigate between different parts of the program. For example, if you wanted to go back to the Manage Jobs function, you would just click the Manage Jobs tab. When I want to go back to the Bros job and edit, I just click the tab for the Bros job. If the file name is too long to fit in the tab, you'll see the first few letters, some dots, and then the last few letters of the file name. If there's an asterisk at the end of the file name on the tab, it means the changes have been made to the file that will need to be saved before you close the file. This is the status bar. It tells you the position of the cursor in the file, which page layout was selected when you translated the file, whether cap locks, num lock, scroll lock, or overtype versus insert mode are currently on or off, and which keyboard map is currently active. These are toolbars. Each toolbar contains buttons that can be clicked to access commonly used commands. Toolbar buttons are just one method of accessing commands. Commands can also be selected from a menu or executed from the computer keyboard. For example, if you wanted to spell check the transcript, you can click this button on the toolbar or click the tools menu. There is no best method of performing commands. You should use whichever method feels easiest and most comfortable for you. This is the text cursor. These are untranslates. Untranslates are one or more steno outlines that have not yet been defined in any of your dictionaries. This is a conflict. Conflicts are steno outlines that can mean more than one word or phrase, and so have been defined as a series of choices. There are a number of display options available in the View menu that you can use to adjust the appearance of the screen while working in Edit. As most of your time is spent in Edit, it is a good idea to take a few minutes to make adjustments so the screen is most appealing and convenient for your personal use. By the way, these adjustments will affect the display of your screen in Edit only. They will not affect how the job prints. You can select one of three different page viewing modes, Normal, Page, or Full Screen. Currently, we're looking at page view. Page view looks just like the printed page. Normal view looks like this. As you can see, some of the elements of the printed page are removed. You no longer see the page borders or box lines, page numbers, or other headers. Normal view defaults to a single spaced view to fit more text on the screen, but can be switched to a double spaced view. You can also change display font for normal view. This only affects the display of the text in Edit. The job will print as it is shown in Page View. Full Screen removes everything but the text on the page from view. There are 10 different dialog panes you can select and add to the display to provide additional information. These panes access a variety of tools to help you edit your job. For example, Vertical Notes opens a pane displaying your steno notes. Clicking View, Panes, Reveal Codes, opens a pane that displays the formatting codes that are embedded with the text. Dialog panes can be increased or decreased by size by clicking and dragging the edge of the pane. Dialog panes can be moved to different locations on the screen by clicking on the pane's title bar and then dragging it to a new position. By the way, if you ever accidentally move a pane and it appears to be floating on top of your text and covering up your text, just double click the title bar. That will make the pane go back to its last docked position. When dialog panes are displayed, there's less room on the screen for your text. Therefore, many Catalyst users like to hide the dialog panes until they're needed. When you click the push pin icon on the title bar of the pane, the pane remains on the screen, but is hidden under a tab. Position the pointer on the tab, and the pane extends to reveal the information. Move the pointer off the pane, and it automatically hides again. To close a dialog pane, you can either deselect it from the menu under View and then Panes, or you can click the Close button on the title bar of the dialog pane. You can also change the colors for a number of items in Edit. For example, if you don't care for the white background and black text, you might choose to select different colors for these items. Once the screen elements look the way you want, you can save these settings by clicking File, Save Alternate User Settings, and type a name. 
To load a previously saved settings file, you can click Load Alternate User Settings and select the file containing the preferred settings. You should now be able to recognize the various elements of the Case Catalyst Edit screen and know where to go to modify these elements. If you'd like to practice this, you can go into the Training User and follow the directions for Exercise 2 in the Edit Practice document.